Dragon Ball Fighters is right up your alley if you've played Marvel vs. Capcom 3, but its mechanics can be a little daunting. Despite having a pretty in-depth tutorial and a story mode that gives out helpful tips for the duration, there are plenty of things that tutorial alone doesn't tell you. But fear not, for your wish is not far beyond my power, as this video will provide you with the Dragon Ball Fighters tips and tricks to improve your game, along with a few puns, you've been warned. I'm Manuas for segment next, grab your Senzo beans and let's dive into it. Although auto combos generate less super meter and do less damage than manual combos, but ignoring them completely wouldn't be a smart move, and you'll know why in a bit. These auto combos won't be the most damaging combos available for the character, but it will be enough to get you started until you learn better and more elaborate combos over time. Know what I'm saying? So the light auto combo earns you a Dragon Ball and does a quick air combo. The medium auto combo does relatively more damage, hits with a low and ends with a super. The heavy auto combo knocks the opponent back and trails them into the corner. Instead of using them separately, you can chain them and this is why it's not a smart move to completely ignore auto combos. For example, if you want to punish an opponent that just attacked you with an unsafe move, then you want to attack with your light auto combo since it starts with a quick jab and instantly switch to the medium auto combo before the light auto combo launches launches the opponent into the air. You'll then end the combo with a super as if you started with a medium in the first place. Once you get the hang of switching from light to medium, then you'll also be chaining into heavy attacks and making up manual combos of your own in no time. <laughs> While you can use the forward directional to avoid the homing attack on the opponent entirely, holding backward avoids executing auto combos at all. This allows you to throw rapid fire jabs or medium attacks without transitioning into a combo. This is good for hit confirming manual combos. The buttons for light attack, medium attack, heavy attack, special attack or key blasts, assist 1 and assist 2 are set as default to your controller. Moreover, dragon rush and super dash macros are set to the right shoulder buttons by default as well. But you can customize your button configuration as you see fit. You can assign buttons to key charge, vanish and sparking blast instead of having to manually press multiple buttons at once to initiate them. Super Dash seems like the perfect movement tool for closing the gap between you and your opponent, but you should avoid making it your go-to or even as a predictable strategy, because it can be easily intercepted with a Kamehameha or crouching heavy attack. So instead of overly using the Super Dash mechanic, pin your opponents with some combos of air dashes, ground dashes and double jumps along with Super Dash. <laughs> During arcade mode that has harder difficulties, AI can land a powerful super attack and nearly drains all of your character health. This is when you need to abuse super dash. Dash backward and then use a super dash to initiate a combo and use a quick Z change near the end of your combo to extend the number of hits you get in. Repeat it for good measure. That is why we say less super dash against humans because humans will catch on to this pretty quickly. But the AI doesn't seem to block super dashes often unless they're used at close range, so more super dash against AI. All in all, it does depend heavily on what suits you at the end of the day. Every character's crouching heavy attack appears to be completely invincible to air attacks by giving your character invincibility to their upper body. This includes the homing attack, which many players have gotten into the habit of spamming. Connecting with this attack will launch your opponent into the air. You can either jump cancel it or follow up with a homing attack of your own. And as much as you feel the urge to choose your favorite teen Gohan and Piccolo, be mindful that making a team is key in Dragon Ball Fighters, because it's a tag team fighter and you have to focus on which character's assist will land more damage with which point character that started the combo. For instance, Freza is very strong at keeping the opposition at a distance with his death saucers and death balls, but when an enemy gets up in his face, he can struggle. To help him out, Gohan can provide the perfect assists in the shape of a dragon punch, creating just enough room for you to breathe. 
Trunks is better at initiating a combo but has difficulty ending the combo with a lot of damage. An Android 16 can finish a combo with a ton of damage or just keep the combo going much better than Trunks. It's all about finding the perfect match and you can experiment in training mode to see which assists can cover certain character weaknesses and how you can use assists to start up or lengthen combos. With three playable characters on your roster during a fight, it's important to curb the need to keep fighting with your most practiced star fighter. You need to make sure you're cycling through your team to land attacks. This is a great strategy for landing damage. How much damage, you may ask? Well... It's over 9,000! What? 9,000? To call one teammate for a quick assist attack, you can tap the shoulder buttons, but if you want to take the control all by yourself, then press it longer. The assist attacks can chip away at an opponent's health or help set up longer combos, while swapping out will give an injured fighter some time to recover health. Sticking with each fighter until they're dead is a bad idea, so make sure to cycle through your teammates often. Reflect and Vanishing are taught in the tutorial, but it doesn't go in-depth with both. Reflect can't only be used to push the opponent off you when they're attacking you, but you can also reflect projectiles, key blasts, kamehameha, as well as super kamehameha. Reflect is way too powerful and using it properly will definitely improve your game. As for Vanishing, the tutorial shows that it's a way to spend a bar and attack the opponent from behind, but in addition to that, Vanishing attacks cancel out of basically anything except super moves. This makes them useful as combo extenders too. If you find yourself unable to finish a combo, try vanishing after the final hit. You'll cancel it and attack the opponent from behind, at which point you can follow up with a homing attack or super attack. You can also vanish after an unsafe move to punish an opponent's counter attack. Sparkling Blast increases your health regeneration, attack damage, and makes you much faster. It can only be triggered once per fight. The length of time Sparkling Blast will last for depends entirely on the number of characters you have left, plus their health. If you have all three, it'll barely last any time at all. But if you're down to your last, well, that's a good length of pure damage. Basically, never use Sparking Blast with three characters and treat it as a comeback mechanic. This will ensure you last a lot longer in any fight you take on. The key button is usually regarded as a special move. However, in Dragon Ball Fighters, throwing a fireball is as easy as punching. That's why projectiles thrown by the key buttons aren't special moves at all. They are normals and they follow the same cancel rules as normals. This means you can chain them after a heavy attack and cancel them into specials and supers. If you seem to be having problems with ending your combos, remember that ending with a key barrage cancelled into a super works just fine. Key attacks also have heavy hit stun, so consider cancelling into them if you can't get the next step of a combo to hit. You can also cancel key attacks on block to keep ranged pressure on your opponent. Players that master the extensive story and arcade modes and squeeze every ounce of value out of them will be justly rewarded with some secret characters and a whole load of zeni to spend in the store. The best way to improve at any fighting game is to play a ton of matches against real people, and Dragon Ball Fighter's casual match mode is the perfect place to do so without having to worry about your online rank. On top of getting to put your own combos and strategies to the test, you will likely pick up a few pointers from your opponents. Once you're feeling confident, feel free to step up to ranked matches. Some time in training mode will do you good. Not only does it give you a chance to get comfortable with how each of your characters move without interruption, it gives you an opportunity to tinker with the extensive options that will help improve your skills. For example, if you keep getting hit by a specific attack, then you can record and playback actions as the training dummy, so you can find the optimal counter. Getting the most out of the training mode is integral to improving as a player, so don't be afraid to spend time practicing. And most importantly, do not forget to have loads of fun with the game. Dragon Ball Fighters is exceptional and will have you hooked. So when all else fails, try biting on evil. Hey, if you liked this video and found it helpful, then leave a like and don't forget to comment down your own tried and tested tips and tricks. Don't forget to subscribe to Segment Next and visit SegmentNext.com for more. Until next time.